I tried Alex Ramosi's strategies from $100 million leads and the results were not what I expected. We're going to go over Alex Ramosi's cold outreach strategies because that's exactly what I do for a living and that's what this whole channel is about. So I'm going to show you what he got right, what he got wrong, and then what I learned actually using his strategies. So the things that I'm going to cover in this video, scripts, list building, the numbers, time frame, and actually where to start. A little backstory, I've been watching Alex since he had 56,000 subscribers before all you knew who he was. I read $100 million offers when it came out and I was trying these crazy marketing strategies just like he said in the book. I I thought it would be really funny to send an email as if I was actually Alex Ramosi, uh, just as a joke, but his legal team didn't like that and he threatened to sue me. So ever since then, I haven't really watched his content. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? So I haven't been paying attention to him, but everybody starts talking about his new book and they're kissing his rear end. I start getting people reaching out to me saying, hey Carson, can you help me out? I read Alex's new book, but it just didn't give me what I really needed. I really need your help. So I thought I would read the book, review it, and show you what he got right and wrong. So let's get into it. Number one, scripts. This is the most important part about your cold average message because this determines everything. This determines how much you make, how good your script is. And I think Alex really got this wrong. Another quick story. I was watching Alex a couple of years ago and I remember a video where I don't really know what the video was or what he was saying, but he mentioned the cold outreach script. He said, everybody responds to this script and it was, Hey, do you know anyone that's interested in blank? Or are you still interested in blank? And I thought, you know what? This guy sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Might as well try. I was already doing good in cold outreach myself, but I was like, you know what? I might as well try what he's doing. So I started sending these messages on Facebook, sent a couple hundred, and I got countless responses of people saying, who is teaching you this garbage Why outreach? would anyone send a message you like this? You really need to change your message. This is terrible. I got way too many negative replies from this. I did get positive replies. It did work, but this is this message probably got me the most negative replies out of any messages I've ever tested. All right, anyways, let's just look at some of the scripts from $100 million leads. So first one being DM scripts. This is for Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Now he uses an approach called building rapport. So he recommends using the open line, Hey name, what's going on in your world today? And then trying to lead this conversation into whatever your offer is. So in the example they give here is I see that you have kids. Do they keep you busy? So if we're selling marketing services, we would say something like, Hey, I see you're running a business. How's that going for you? Or, Hey, I see you're running Facebook ads. How's that working for you? It's not a terrible idea, but I'm going to show you why this rarely works. No business owner wants to hold a conversation with a stranger on any platform. They ha they are too busy. They have too much going on. They do not want to play 20 questions with you. So I found it much more effective if you just go out with a direct response message. This is having your offer within the first initial message that you're sending. You don't want to try to build rapport. And here's a few reasons why. Number one, it's hard to track the conversation. So if you do get a positive reply, it's hard to know what that positive reply actually means or if that positive reply is actually someone that's interested in your service. So if I'm tracking positive replies and I say, hey, how's your day going? And someone says, oh, it's going good. That's a positive reply, but is that person actually interested in my service? The second reason is that each conversation can go a million different ways. If I say, hey, I see you have kids. How are they doing? And they're like, oh, actually one of them has cancer. And you're like, holy cow. <laughs> and then now it goes a completely different path. And if each conversation is going a million different direction, it could take forever for it to get to the point where you're actually having a conversation about your offer. And even if you do pitch your offer after 30 messages back and forth with this one person, and on top of that, you're doing like hundreds of conversations. So back and forth, 30 messages with 30 different people having to manage all those conversations, only 3% of the market's really ready to buy at any given time. And so you have these 30 conversations, maybe one person really actually wants to buy. And so you're wasting all that time with all those people. Now, Alex says you really only want to have three or four messages going back and forth and then try to lean it to the offer by saying, do you know anyone that's looking for a blank? But as we know, <laughs> that I don't know if, <laughs> if you want to really try that. I made a whole video about, <laughs> literally an entire video about why building rapport doesn't work. And you can watch that if you want to. I get a lot of messages every day. We all do. I rarely respond to any of them. So I'm going to give you some scenarios and you show me which ones you would actually respond to, right? Hey, Karsten, not responding. Hey, Karsten, how's your day going? Still not responding. Hey, Karsten, love your YouTube videos. Not responding. Hey, Carson, love your YouTube videos. I created three thumbnails for you that will give you a 12% CTR. Are you open to looking at them? Ah, a direct end result, right? Direct response marketing has a really good outcome, but maybe I still won't respond, right? Hey, Carson, love your YouTube videos. I created three thumbnails for you that will guaranteed give you a 12% CTR. If it doesn't work, I'll literally pay you $1,000. Can I send them over? Now I have to respond, right? That's 12% CTR. CTR is click-through rate. That's people clicking on the video. That's really good. He's guaranteeing it for me. And even if I lose, 
I still win. Even if I don't get a 12% CTR, uh, I still win by winning the $1,000, right? So it's a win-win for me. Why wouldn't I respond yes to this? I'm really good at my job. Now, when someone responds yes and says that they're interested in my offer, we still usually have to do three or four messages back and forth to get them over to the booked sales call. And so I have a whole video that I made on how to create the outreach message and how to book calls through DMs in my free course in the description below. Now, Alex Ramosi does touch on direct response outreach messages, but only within cold email. I'm not sure why only within cold email, but we're going to go over that script too and why it doesn't work. Subject line, are you open? Hey, first name, are you guys open right now? I can see your goals for your clients. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what does that mean? We specialize in helping avatar get goal under time frame without pain. I know that's a bold claim, but we've helped X clients in just under time generally right over blank results. Some of our clients include notable clients. The best part is irresistible offer. Does it make sense for us to hop on a quick 15 minute call to discuss further? If so, here's my booking link. Case studies, case study one, case study two it says five to 12 case studies within the email. Obviously you have a few options here. Do nothing and X, Y, Z or risk it and get paid irresistible offer. Click my booking link below, pay $1 to make $15,000 see what else we have to offer booking link looking forward to speaking with you soon p.s just respond back no if you're not interested in receiving emails again all right there's a lot of little things in here that you might not pick up on but everyone else that's reading the email that's receiving the email they pick up on it and it decreases the response rate dramatically now alex kind of mentions this in the book but he doesn't really apply it here i'm not sure why but basically every platform that we want to reach out on or that we're using, we want to use that platform the way it was intended to use, right? So how other people use that platform. We want to look like a real human. We do not want to look like a robot. So when we're reaching out to somebody, we want to try to use personalization. We want to reach out as if we're a friend reaching out to another friend, not a creep or a robot reaching out to somebody. So I'm going to break down a few things here that make it look like it's an ad or that it's a robot reaching out to somebody and why nobody will respond. First thing we have here is we specialize in helping blah, 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 right? First thing, we specialize, okay? Just by saying we specialize, now it sounds like, okay, you're a company reaching out to me and now this is some sort of entity and now it looks like this is an automated email and you're also talking about yourself a lot. We help this company, blah, 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 which sometimes this can work, but I usually don't like to do this. I usually say, hey, I just wanna see if I could help you, blah, 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 right? This might seem really small, but it actually is pretty significant because we all receive spam messages every day on every single platform, right? And you know when you see a spam message, it's usually something very subtle, very slight, but you know when it's a spam message and that's true with every platform and so if we're using these little things that big corporations use like as soon as you realize it's a spam message or it's a robot or an automation reaching out to you and some company sent out tens of thousands of emails you no longer care if i'm reaching out to you directly you feel obligated to respond back to me because we have this reciprocity you you're, you don't want to leave me hanging right but if a robot reaches out to me and reaches out to 10,000 other people i don't care because i'm not connected to that robot in any way the reason i can tell alexa i hate you go kill yourself is because i know alexa is a robot and she doesn't care. <laughs> then we have a whole bunch of fluff here. Like, I know it's a bold claim, but we've helped X and under this amount of time get this result. Some of our clients include this. The best part is blank. Uh, I usually don't recommend this just because again, it makes it look like an ad. If it looks like an ad, less people are gonna respond. Uh, sometimes this works if the offer is really good. If you do have a really good irresistible offer, like with the thumbnail one that we just created, then this can kind of work, but I usually recommend staying away from something like this and making the email really long too. Does it make sense to hop on a quick 15 minute call, booking link, and then a whole bunch of case studies and then more stuff, right? More crazy offer stuff that they're trying to pitch makes it look like more of an ad and also it makes it longer. The whole thing is we don't really even, what we're trying to do, try to make the entire email fit on one page, right? So when they open the email, it's right there. If it's longer than that, every single step that the client has to take, everything that they have to do, the more they have to do, the less likely they are to do it. If they have to click the booking link, select a time, select a date, all that stuff, then they're less likely to book, right? But if I say, are you free tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST? All they have to do now is just say yes or no. So we want to remove friction as much as possible. And so if the email is long, every single line that you've added, like I received, I'm sure we've all received really long outreach messages. And I, I read that and the first thing you say is I'm not reading that essay, right? And one of the biggest, the biggest no-nos within this email is this right here. P.S. Just respond back no if you're not interested in receiving my emails again. Now, if you put that in there, now I know it's an automated email because you're wanting me to fit within this box, right? Respond no if blah. Respond yes if blah, right? Those will crush your reply rates immediately. So do not add anything like that in there. Again, we want to make it look like a real human. Now, there is this script in here that I really did like. Hey, I'm watching you as a subject line. Hey, name. Was just checking out your site and noticed a cool opportunity with your email opt-in. Didn't want to overload you with a long email, so I put together a short video to show you exactly what I found that might double your email revenue. Do you have 15 minutes in the next couple of days to discuss? Let me know. Uh, 
Uh, it is weird because they don't have the link to the video. So I'm guessing you would add a Loom video link in there somewhere as well. I think that's actually a really great script. All right, watch this magic I'm about to do. You see the like button? You should go click that. Look at it glow. <laughs> Isn't that cool? If you like this video so far, I create videos every single week on how to get clients through direct outreach. So you should consider subscribing. All right, next up, list scraping. He says there's three different ways that he scrapes lead lists. One is software, second one is brokers, and the third one is scraping yourself. He gets most of this right, but he got two things wrong. One, I would never use a list broker. And then two, he does not go in depth on the softwares that he uses, which I understand because softwares change every six months. So I'll give you some current good softwares on list scraping. I made a whole video called best lead scraping tools of 2023. And I've personally tested like literally every single lead scraping tool to see which one had the best results within that video. So for local business scraping, if you're trying to find uh, plumbers, roofers, stuff like that, I recommend D7 Lead Finder and then also leadsgorilla.io. They give you a good chunk of data for a really cheap price and the quality is pretty good. For more professional businesses like dentists, lawyers, CEOs of software companies, the best value tool for finding emails is coldemail.com. It's $79 for unlimited scraping. You get about 55% of the emails you get are about verified leads, which is pretty average in the industry. There's also scrub.com, which is a really good tool as well. If you're looking for a good tool that will give you good phone numbers and emails, salesql.com is pretty good for the value. And then there's also leadrocks.io, which is good just for really the phone numbers and nothing else. Also check appsumo.com for some of these tools. Sometimes they're on there and appsumo.com is just a place where you can buy softwares for a lot cheaper. So I would check that out. Now scraping lead lists yourself is a completely different ball game. I use tools like Instant Data Scraper, which is a really easy scraping tool for like almost any website. You can go on any website, click Instant Data Scraper, Chrome extension, and it'll scrape the website for you. If you're doing a little bit more advanced scraping, I use a tool called Octoparse. They're both free and pretty easy to use. And if you're trying to get like really personal data, you can literally look up anybody on LinkedIn, find out their first and last name and their location, put that data into truepeoplesearch.com, and then you can find their info, like where they live, their phone number, their address, like all that stuff. And that website is completely free as well. All right, the third thing is is the numbers. How many messages should you be sending? All right, a while ago, Alex Ramosi said that you do not want to use automations. He was very, very against automations at one point. And for the same reason that I already described, which is if you're sending out 10,000 emails, the person that's receiving the email knows that you're just automating these emails, then they're not going to really going to want to respond because they know that you don't care about them by sending that automated email. So they don't really care about you, right? Which is completely understandable. But what we want to do is we want to use automations, but make it look like it's an actual human. So in that case, it's a win-win scenario because we're able to leverage the power of automations because it's sending out thousands of messages for us. But on top of that, a lot of people are responding back because we make the message look human. Over the years, I think Alex has changed his views and perspective on this, which is what I've been saying all along, which automations do work, but you will get less responses because you're automating things and you aren't able to personalize it as much, which is it's pretty obvious, right? Alex has this rule of 100. If you're doing 100 outreaches a day, then you'll have more clients than you know what to do with. Now, if I think if you're doing automations, then this isn't true. If you're doing a cold email campaign, your response rate is going to be from one to 5%, usually one to 3%. And about a third of those are actually going to be interested. So maybe one person out of every hundred people that you reach out to are actually going to be interested. And out of the people that are actually interested, only 75% of those will actually book a call with you. So that's either one per day or one every three to four days if you're only sending 100 messages per day. And that's on a really good campaign, like one uh, call per day on only 100 emails sent per day, that's really good. So if you're automating things, I would recommend sending on several different platforms at once and see which ones give you the best responses. I would start small, so like sending 100 emails, maybe a couple hundred emails per day, 50 Facebook messages per day, 50 Instagram messages per day, 25 connection requests on LinkedIn per day. And if you find out maybe people are responding a lot on Facebook, it's easy to get calls on Facebook, then we can ramp up Facebook. We can and try to buy four aged Facebook accounts and be able to send 50 messages per Facebook account. So now we can send 200 messages a day on Facebook. Now, if you do the rule of 100 and you're actually doing manual outreach, one, that'll be extremely hard to actually send out 100 messages manually. Uh, but two, I think you would get a ton more responses. You could probably, you would probably have a crazy amount of people interested in your services if you're doing personalized outreach to people the way that I teach. I also have a free video in the description below my free course on how to, I do personalized outreach. I usually get, you know, you can get a 50% or 25% response rate off of personalized outreach. So that's really, really good. Anyways, what Alex is saying at the rule 100, it is pretty exaggerated if you're using automations. All right, the next thing is time frame. Alex says in the book that it literally took him a year before cold outreach became profitable for him. So it's long and slow, but I don't think that's the case. I think you can implement the right strategies that I've already mentioned within this video. And if you implement the right strategies, you can get results this week. Most people are just doing it wrong for so long. And so that's why it takes so long to get results. I literally had a friend that started nine days ago and he got his first client today, but he has me helping him every single day, giving him the right strategies that he should be doing. But if you're doing the wrong things, like some of the 
things that Alex is saying in this book, it might take you a lot longer. Now, I do know people that are like brand new to this space that, have, that aren't doing anything. You don't have a solid offer or anything yet. It can take you 30 to 45 days to get your first client or actually to start getting consistent appointments in. But once you have a good offer and you're getting uh, your first couple appointments in, it's actually really easy to replicate it and get more appointments in because all you gotta do is send out more messages. Like another guy in my group who was actually even struggling just to stay afloat and uh, for the first month, just trying to figure out what he needs to do, how to actually send out the messages, all that stuff. And now he has a problem of having way too many appointments. He knows exactly how to get appointments whenever he needs to. So that no longer becomes a problem. So once you get past that phase, cold outreach is just a printing machine, right? And the next thing is where to start. Now the book says you want to do it in this order, warm outreach, content, cold outreach, then ads. I do not think that's a good idea at all. First thing, which is warm outreach. No one wants to send messages to their friends. Uh, a lot of times you don't have friends that are relevant to the business that you're actually doing. If I'm starting a business, charting gym owners, I don't know any gym owners. <laughs> so most of your friends are irrelevant and they can't help you anyways, right? Uh, the next thing is content. I don't really recommend doing this either. If you are just starting out, why would you be making content? Because you don't even know how to fulfill on the client. And if you do know how to fulfill, you don't even have any clients. So you can't say, oh, we help this client do this thing, right? If you do cold outreach first, doing cold outreach to the right audience, you can get appointments really quickly. Like within nine days, you can get a client starting from nothing. And once you get that client, you can literally just focus on that client for the next month. After the next month, you're gonna learn a lot with just in this one month. And you can then make a video or a couple videos based on what you learned over the past month of working with this client. And then you can start building yourself up as an authority on YouTube, just from the couple clients that you do have. So I would do uh, cold outreach first, and then you start working on content. Then the content will bring in warm leads to you. And then you can do warm outreach to the audience that's coming to you. And then you don't really need to do ads because you have way too many sales calls as it is. And that's the exact strategy that I use. I did cold outreach first, started creating content. Now I do warm and now I have way too many calls. If you want me to help you one-on-one -on -one create a cold outreach system to consistently get 120 sales calls per month, you can book a call with my team below. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I will talk to you soon.